There we go. We're off and running. Recording. Wheels up. Three tables up. Ready to go, right? So what team I am hosting tonight, my name is Jason, in case we haven't met. I am the guy in that photo in the, uh, in the sort of in the middle there. That's my wife on the left. And uh, Tracy and Carrie, that was a pick from not so long ago at the uh, Coach Summit. Feels like, it feels like it was a little while ago at this point, doesn't it? I mean, it feels like it was... Yeah. A lot has happened. Yeah, a lot has happened. It's, it's been a very eventful week. Just... Right, the mute still. Yep. <laughs> All right, there we go. So Dan, I unmuted you. So I think we're Thanks. good to go. So um, let's give a shout out to the new coaches like we always do. I'm just going to scroll through the list here and see if I see any new names. Mm -hmm. Jacob Thompson. Yes, Sir Mattingly is a new coach on Sarah. Jacob Thompson. Awesome. Yeah. And Amy Appleby's a restarting coach. So I'm going to call her new too. So shout out to you as well. Awesome, awesome. guys. Applause. So tonight, the, uh, the quote to grow on, and you might relate this back to the topic of the night, uh, which we'll be talking about here officially in a minute. But the quote to grow on this week is not. Um, is not Vince Lombardi. It's a guy by the name of Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> Excuse me. So Gary Vaynerchuk is a guy who has really built his career and his fame on talking about social media and training people on social media. He built a business about wine online. Uh, and that's really where he started out with social media is, is taking that business and just exploding it and building his expertise that way and really building a brand uh, in, in an industry where people really looked at it and thought, you know, it's kind of this fancy snobby industry. You have to be this type of person to be respected in the industry of wine. And he really just exploded all of that. Um, so here's a quote from him that I thought is pretty applicable. It's, you have to understand your own personal DNA. Don't do things just because I do them or Steve Jobs does them or Mark Cuban tried it. You need to know your personal brand and stay true to it. I attract a crowd not because I'm an extrovert or I'm over the top or I'm oozing with charisma. It's because I care. Mm. So, which is even a little bit more interesting if you know the guy because he drops about five F-bombs per minute and he's about the least cuddly guy you've ever seen online. But at the root of it, he does. He comes across with just genuinely being interested in caring about people's success and what they're about. And when I looked at that quote, I was like, you know how many of us try to do things because not maybe uh, Steve Jobs or Mark Cuban did something, but maybe it's because we saw Scotty Hobbs do something. Oh, I'm going to go do that. Or maybe Lindsey Matway did something or any of the top coaches, right? I think it's really easy to look at that and try to mimic and try to be who they are uh, mm -hmm. rather than just being ourselves and knowing our personal brand and staying true to it. So really wanted to share that quote as a way to kick off the evening. Any thoughts there, Dan? Thanks. I, I just think uh, I love just that ending there where it just talks about um, the, uh, the I care. I think that's so important. And that's uh, especially as it relates to the topic we're going to talk about tonight. It's so important to like, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Like, oh, we got the that. Success Club Three Lives. Um, again, I'm thinking. I need to shave my head to get up there on that top row is the way that it looks. I'm seeing as if I'm a guy. I'll grow a beard. <laughs> but Carrie, yeah. Stephanie, congrats. Uh, a lot of other folks um, who have changed at least one life this month. And I'm sure that all of us on the bottom there are hustling as much as I am to try to get it uh, pushed across the goal line and, and see our picture up top there. Um, so congratulations. And I just love the idea of the, the lives is a way to measure it versus just points because really that is what it's about. And you know, the, the longer I do this and, and the more feedback I get from people who maybe I helped six months ago and maybe I haven't heard from, they come back and the impact that you still had on their lives is even more so once they decide to re-engage and come around. So it's, it's been pretty amazing. So what's coming yeah. up? A couple things just around the bend here that we want to make sure everybody are, is aware of so that we can invite and 
get things ready for that. One of them is the size group, August 10th. Is that something you want to uh, tee up a little bit, Dan? Yeah. So it's, it's actually, it's technically going to be still the fit for life challenge. Um, but it's going to feature size as a, a main focal point behind it. Um, because it's so new, we just really want to make that a, uh, an accent point for a lot of people. And it, it's funny guys. Cause the, the short story of that is, um, I, Truly, my brand, I was like, ah, maybe I'm more of like the workout people who like to really like just like do push ups and pump iron, push things around or whatever. And I just kind of had that view. It's like, I don't think this size thing is going to really appeal to my market, the people I'm, I'm contacting with. And so I just really just did kind of a Hail Mary post on uh, Sunday night, I think it was. And I threw up a stock photo, which I never recommend. So that was that much of a, a Hail Mary. It wasn't even a personal one. So I threw up uh, – no, I'm sorry. It wasn't Sunday night. It was last uh, – it was like Thursday last week. Um, and, I, and I put that up. and I put up that picture and I said, hey, interested in doing a, a group on the 10th, which is the same day we had already planned to do the Fit for Life Challenge. Um, and, and is anybody interested? And I'm not kidding. It was the dumbest post ever. But – like people can't when I, when I specifically just said for people who uh, don't like to work out but like to dance that was the specific and man did that hit the that hit a a chord struck a chord with people so got a lot of people are really interested in size um having done it at our super saturday i would say guys we're really going to have to program well with size it is it's freaking tough the first workout was can y'all hear me still um but uh it was uh the, the first workout was so um i was very surprised at the the difficulty level on some of the stuff and really no modifier on it so yeah uh so amy i would just say particularly you with you and your knees i probably wouldn't recommend size for you right right off the bat here uh, uh, and we had a couple of knees replaced, so probably not the best workout for you right in the beginning. So just, and there's no modifier. So that was one thing I, I found about, about size. So you're going to need to direct people carefully. And if they do choose to do this, which is great. Sorry, I got to train. <laughs> um, there it is. Uh, but the size group, you're going to make sure that we really program well and then make sure your people know that there's modifications we can do. So as a person, I'm so sorry, as a person, uh, that you're doing this, it could be great value to add to people as you do this, um, as you do the program, is to know some of the moves that are in this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, something's wrong with my internet. So I got, I'm going to go inside and maybe see if that's part of the problem. Um, so anyway, just uh, Jay, go ahead from there. I think we're, we're pretty good. I'm going to travel. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I believe one of the ways I haven't tried it yet, just being straight up um, <clears throat> and partially for some of the reason that you've been describing there, Dan, but I do believe that there is one of the size routines out on Team Beach Body on Demand. So uh, that's the best way to probably let everybody try it. So at least you're coming from it, uh, coming at things from an educated perspective that you've actually tried it uh, when you do get questions about it. So I'd say go out there grab at least that one exercise workout, uh, that one routine, and uh, rock, oh, through it. rock through it, it so that you have the experience yourself. And I would just say this, having done it, and Claire could probably back me up on this too, we're both kind of in that, well, I've done Insanity, I've done other workouts and things like that, so I'm like, yeah, this is going to be wimpy. I'll tell you what, man, it was 28 minutes of legit, like, kicking your butt. I was like, at the end, man, we were, we were sweating, and it was, mm -hmm. it was fierce. So, really good stuff. Good to know. No joke. So what about modifier on size, Dan? Just curious. You mentioned that. Uh, but... Modifier for size? Yeah. Uh, there, there's no modifier. It okay. does, he does not actually take you through any modifications, which was a, a shocking thing for me. There you so. go. All right. Perfect. The other one is just a little chance to promo the High Performance Academy, Dan, that uh, you have coming up, which is going to be awesome. Can't wait. I know the value in there is going to be huge. So just wanted a reminder there. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I just think in that specifically, we're probably looking at uh, just a matter of you got you got to be Emerald by uh, June, excuse me, June, uh, by <laughs> August. 
uh, third. So that's this, uh, the, the qualifying. So, it, I mean, that's the starting of this. So you've got to be qualified by this Thursday. If you want to be part of our group and you also need to be either registered, uh, for summit or you need to be on the waiting list for summit. Okay. And we're going to take your word at that, that you're going to make sure that you are doing that. But high performance Academy, um, absolutely. That would be great. Uh, Amy, that'd be awesome. And there are, there are certain uh, moves that are I, that are some easily modifiable. I, I I know, but definitely that would be a great way to add value. Um, but the high performance academy guys, we're really going to help you now. Here's the thing: we don't just want to teach you how to do more stuff. Okay, the last thing we want to do, any of us in this in this business, just wants to. We don't want to just add more stuff to your list, but we want to do two things. We want to teach you how, more or better how to think. We want you to think like a leader and start making and setting goals like a leader and then acting on instead of just frantic. Okay. This is what I see. And this is why a reason why I'm really happy about pulling kind of being our, our go team together, really pulling ourselves together in this and a little bit of insulation. And I'm not trying to say that we, we want to like put, put our heads in a hole kind of a thing, but man, there are a lot of distractions out there. Okay. I'm just being really honest. There are a lot of distractions on stuff from different, you know, how we, how we can run our businesses different ways. I mean, I see, you guys see this in your news feed so many times, like, like beach body coaching. I just saw it like, you know, getting 30 leads in, you know, in a month, blah, 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 all these quick things. It's like, man, you know what? You keep trying to find the magic bullet, the magic fix, just stick to something that works. And we're going to try to really work through that with the high performance Academy. And so it's not just going to be, it's going to be the system that we're probably putting together, but beyond that, it's going to be more about how you think. So sorry, enough, enough on that. All right. Thanks, Dan. So for tonight, the uh, main topic, gather your crowd, creating your free support group. Um, hopefully everybody's near the keyboard and can type. Um, how many of you have started a support group of your own, whether it's for a challenge group or one that you've kept up and running as kind of a, a permanent support group in Facebook. Yeah, Lindsay, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Danny V, yep. Yeah. Cool. Bryce did, Tyler the Beast is in there. Yeah, so this isn't something that's new, right? I mean, the, the, the concept of Facebook groups being used for Beachbody is not new. That's about how everybody tends to run their challenge groups, right? So what's, what's the twist here? Well, let me back up a second. I mean, what, what's a group anyway, for those of you who aren't completely up to speed or don't know how they compare with the other Facebook tools? Your Facebook personal profile is the one that you use on a daily basis, right? It's the one where you get to live life out loud, so to speak. Uh, Beachbody is part of that, so you're probably sharing some of your workout stuff, um, you're also sharing family vacations, pictures of your kids, uh, pictures of any trips that you've taken, maybe some selfies, maybe some pics of what you're eating. I mean, all the usual social stuff that people use Facebook for. Uh, really, first and foremost, being a person, right? Facebook like pages, uh, you might be familiar with those. You can set those up as a company, basically, is how they're most commonly used. Uh, they can still be amazing. They've got a bit of a bad rap right now because of the, the adjustments that Facebook has made to organic reach for those. Um, it takes a little bit more effort on that front, but they still serve a, a unique purpose and they can still be pretty amazing. So I, I think if you're considering whether to do a like page, it's still worth investigating, but just understanding how they work is going to be key to that up front. <coughs> Excuse me, but the topic tonight is specific to Facebook groups. And those can be private and they can help you connect on a more personal level. Um, you can use them to grow your business is, is not only for challenge groups and support groups and six day clean eating challenges and things like that, but more of um, a permanent base for your tribe to assemble so that you can continue to grow that and have a hub for your business in order to build that culture and, and again, to build that tribe around what you're trying to accomplish as a coach. So how do you do that? Um, 
Well, these groups, they can be as open or as closed as you want to be. Some people require challenge packs or Shakeology to get into that free challenge group, which is the way that I've done mine for a long time. Um, some are more open than that. They require nothing more than a mutual friend. Um, and in that one specifically, um, I've been part of a mastermind group on Facebook, just about general online business. And that last one where it just requires a mutual friend is really what got my head turning about this specific topic tonight a little bit more because what I saw is a group start and the group started with about a dozen people. And this dozen people just shared something in common, a, a core interest that they were passionate about, a lot like we're talking about with Beachbody or one of our programs, right? There's a specific goal in mind that we all share in common. So we got in there and the, the gentleman that's leading that group just created content that was so good and he was so much himself every day and he created so much value that the other people in the group started to invite their friends to the group. And that's where the mutual friend requirement came in. So if he saw people coming in, trying to get into the group, which was closed, and they had a mutual friend, he'd let them in. But the entire time he was positioning himself as the owner of the group, the gatekeeper of the group, and the fact that he basically created this room where everybody could assemble. And lastly, of course, there's the possibility to require nothing at all and just let everybody in. That's one I definitely would not recommend. Uh, Facebook can be a little bit of a crazy place. And the idea of what we're trying to do here is position each of us as the expert for our own group, for the niche that that group really serves. So how do we do this? Well, it's really adding value and being yourself. If you every now and then go out and uh, have a pizza, or maybe you love to camp or fish, or maybe you have um, some unique hobby that you love to take on, that's the stuff that should be shared. Now, a lot of that's shared already on your personal wall, but not in the same context as it would be in a group about fitness, for example. Or say that you did a, a group for, um, like I was talking with Tyler a little earlier, if you ran a group for guys who were trying to bulk up. In theory, you could run a group with great information and great value, positioning yourself as a leader for people with that need and that passion and by doing that, they're going to invite their friends. And when they do decide that they need a program, they need a coach, they need some supplements, you're just naturally going to be the person that they reach out to, to connect to. By sharing that personality in your posts, right? That's what people are looking for because they want you. They want me when they're in a group with me. They want to know what I'm about. They want to know the hurdles I'm facing. They want to know about how's my back injury doing, which I've been updating people in my group about for a while now. People can't relate to a cardboard cutout of their ideal fitness coach, right? They don't want a cardboard cutout. They want somebody that they can really grab onto and, and get to know. Um, and worst of all, the scary part is if you attract people by being somebody that you're not, they're going to expect you to be that. So if you draw people in by sharing the motivational post of the day, but you're really passionate about making gluten-free food, is there's going to be a disconnect there. Or if you have a lot of fun and you have kind of a zany personality, but you just copy and paste motivational quotes, they're not going to connect with you when you finally want to connect with them. It's not going to resonate the way that it should. So what do you connect with is a great way to figure out what you should be posting and then what you should be sharing. What types of things do you run across in groups that you see and you're like, wow, that is such good stuff, right? That really resonates with me. That's, that's my personality right there. I get that. Or that's hilarious. Or, oh my gosh, that's so useful. That has so much value. I'd love to share this. That's the type of stuff to put in this group, right? Because at that point, people can't just, and this is where this, the groups differ from a Facebook like page, because these groups require them to invite people in unless they're crafty with cut and paste and saving things to their desktop or their smartphone, they need to invite people in if they want them to be part of it. And you can encourage them to invite people in to be part of it. Again, you can keep it as open or as closed as you want. But um, that, that's, the, that's the idea, is create as much value in there as you can so that like little ants, right? They find the food, they find the sugar, they go back and tell their friends and bring their friends back with them. That's what you're after. And in these groups, you can imagine, and I'm sure you've seen this in the challenge groups, you end up creating a culture and a space that's very, very safe where people 
start to know each other and trust each other and share on a regular basis. And they'll comment on each other's posts and cheer each other on. And uh, it, it's just, it's been pretty incredible. Um, so why do this, right? Why go through the trouble of creating something and then closing it off from the world? Well, because you can position yourself as a leader and more so than you could on a like page. Because again, a like page you can do, but it's, it's almost more of a broad reaching brand type of exposure than it is this personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. It's much easier to create that type of relationship in these groups. You can have fun. You can be a bit more you. If you know that the entire crew that's in there shares some interest with you, you know that you can be a little bit more wacky, a little bit yourself, um, and, and relax a little bit and just be there for the rest of the group. You can stay in a routine rhythm with your posts because you know this group is here. So it's not the stop and start of, okay, I've got a six day clean eating challenge. Now I'm not going to have anything for four or five days outside of my Facebook wall. Now I'm gonna have a 21 day challenge. So I have a 21 day group to host. So I have posts for that. It's just every day, day in, day out, stay in a rhythm. And by doing that, it just builds that, builds that momentum. Uh, one of the most important things is that it's a, a safe refuge for your tribe, right? With, with people who are looking for somebody they can depend on to share the struggles that they've had and the goals that they have, which for some people it's extraordinarily emotional and extraordinarily sensitive. If you think about the group that you're creating, it might be the only place that these people have to go to really be themselves and share the fact that they're struggling or share what they're really going after for their goal. They may not have that at home. They may not have that at work. Not everybody has that kind of support. So think about um, the power of being able to create something like that as a coach that allows people to be themselves and be safe and to give them uh, a place where they, can, where they can go and be themselves and, and lean on a friend, right? And as a bonus, right? And I put this last because if we run the groups, if we go back to the Vaynerchuk quote at the, the beginning of the meeting tonight, if we put the success club points first, if we put all of that other stuff first, if we put the sales first, uh, the challenge packs, all of that stuff, they're not going to bring you people because nobody's going to bring their friends knowing that there's going to be a hard sell, right? So I've found personally that in these longer term permanent support groups, it's best off with rare exception to keep it just post where you're sharing and offering value, offering recipes, offering whatever you see as value for your tribe and really minimize those posts where you talk about what challenge pack is on sale or uh, anything like that. Uh, it, it tends to degrade the trust that's in the group and really you just want this safe place with a tribe of people who feel so safe and so valued and they love it so much that they invite their friends. That's really what we're trying to build. So I took a couple of quick screenshots here. I know Amanda, I saw you um, commenting in the chats and yours is one that I screenshot here. Amanda set hers up and you can see a couple of quotes of hers from her group, hope you don't mind, um, but <coughs> it, she's done a fabulous job of creating a, a safe place where people can go. Um, Carrie has also done that. Um, she shares in there and they do challenges and everything, temporary clean eating challenges to get people involved and it continues to grow and she invites people into that. Um, let me see if I can share my own just for a second. Hopefully you can see this. So you'll see Got it. Um, what's happening in here is, I, I've been posting in here for a long time. I mean, it's been a couple years. Um, hit or miss, we can see this morning there's a butternut squash recipe, which was awesome tonight for dinner. Um, got some likes, scene activity on those, some questions. Anybody tried cashew milk? I shared a selfie with a week one update pick. Um, if you go through this, some questions about bread, Swiss chard, I mean, it goes on and on, right? Um, people talk about how they've struggled. Um, but you can see that through building these groups, it gives people, again, 
a safe place where they can go. And to Lindsay's point in the chat, um, it's interesting because just naturally people are going to gravitate toward you as the leader of the, uh, the group, right? They know that you're the one that is out there uh, living it every day and that you have this background information because you're going to be answering questions, you're going to be asking questions, you're going to be sharing value in there. When they finally decide, you know what, I need something or I want to take it to the next level, you're going to be the person that they reach out to. Or they're going to post the question in the group and odds are, because we are who we are, when they ask what kind of workouts are out there or what should they do, either people will refer them to you in the group or they'll talk about some of the Beachbody um, programs that we already do. Um, there's nothing wrong, by the way, with putting some house rules in place that say, look, if you're going to come in here pitching magic wraps or magic pills or magic anything or doing a sales pitch, you're out of here right? Because we got to keep a, keep a safe place. This is a group that I'm running to help support people and to help stay accountable myself. So you can run it however you want to run it. Again, like at the beginning of the call tonight, you don't have to do it the way top coach, whoever does it or however I do it or however anybody else on the team does it. There's nothing wrong with thinking through it and creating exactly the group and the culture that you want and the style that you want to create it in. So you can, you can do that however you like to do it. Jason, can I mention one thing here real quick? I will, buddy. So here's a um, synology that I like to use. So if you if you are a fisherman, fisherwoman, fisher person, um, going for fish, and you were in the ocean, okay, and you had to 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 get your handle on like finding the fish it's going to be a lot more difficult because you've got just sheer volume of water that you've got to, 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 to discover the fish in. But if you've somehow took those same amount of fish, say that we're in the ocean and let's just for Jason's benefit and my benefit, we put it all into Lake Michigan. Okay. So it's a smaller lake. We put all those fish in that lake. It's, now, let's just, you got to play with me for just a second here. It's salt water versus fresh water. Okay, yeah, just right, hang with me on the analogy. But anyway, so you put all those into that, that area. It's going to be easier for you to catch a fish in Lake Michigan. Now, let's give them smaller, and we go down where I, I kind of uh, my, uh, first had a first job, Cold Water Lake, probably about, uh, about I mean, maybe about 200-acre lake. Okay, you put those same amount of fish into that, you pretty much can drop your hook anywhere and you're going to catch something, right? So the idea behind a support group like this for me is the fact that you are building your tribe. So because here's what, and here's what can happen, guys. I'm just being real about with how you share your content. So the pressure is often maybe a little bit to share so much on your main timeline. You can live life out loud still there. But when it comes to like value posts, that kind of stuff is your, so you're just constantly scanning for adding people to your, to your group. And if you want to do it more of the way where it's like, Hey, if I know you and you're interested in fitness, come on in. That's great. Uh, we can add that way. That's, that's, that's the way I do it. Um, or you can be it as like, Hey, you're going to initially form a challenge. You know, you'll be part of a challenge and then you'll, uh, and at least, purchase something and then we'll put you in that support group maybe after you do it like a 21 day challenge or something like that you have different options but the idea is you're getting this group of people together in a smaller group so when it is time so check this out watch how you do this so if you are uh let's say you've got a size challenge coming up let's just take that for for you know just for uh, uh, hypothetically speaking here so you've got this size challenge coming up i might be priming the pump in my support group a bit so if you guys never know this like if you're fishing sorry use fish analogy again but like catfish when they're you you put them in these like the ponds you know the, it's the pond catfish where you catch them it's the farm raised right which you're not supposed to eat right but it is that when you when you put so when the they feed the catfish this certain type of food all they do is they put that same food on the hook and how easy is it for then someone to throw a hook in there and pick it up? So basically saying, if you're going to prime the pump for your size challenge, start talking about, man, 
I, you know, it would be, it would be cool. Like, I mean, almost this is before it even the size releases, you could even go, wow. You know, sometimes I just don't want to work out, but I just, you know, I love, I love dancing. Does anybody do a crazy, you know, let's do a crazy dance day and you could just do a, um, have you ever seen the, um, uh, what's that app called? Um, uh, Jason, help me. What's the app that we're, uh, dubstep. Sorry. Like you do a dubstep where you do, you're doing some kind of dance or whatever. And you post a video, bam, of you doing some crazy, stupid dance. And that just starts to prime the pump. Oh, dance, dance. And I, I don't know how you would necessarily do it. I mean, you're just trying to give it a week, maybe it's a weak example, but the fact is you start to go, Oh man, for people who don't like to exercise, maybe like your strength, you like to do, uh, the nutritional side, but maybe finding, you know, doing insanity is horrible. Oh, I hate that program or, Oh man, I hate the way I feel when I do P90Is or whatever, but man, dancing, that'd be kind of cool. So priming the pump a little bit. So then when people finally, it is time to say, then they see the invite maybe on your regular t timeline because of your friends, right? They see that and you don't even have to necessarily put it in the group. You could put it in the group. It's still an option. Say, Hey guys, just so you know, this is what's happening. I want to let you know, no pressure. But that's a way to kind of find the pump. So, anyway. Yeah, and it's again, it totally depends on how forward you want to be about that. I I would say that the more salesy you are, the less trust the the crew is going to have. So what I try to do is, when somebody comes in to the group, I will personally message them and welcome them, and maybe ask a few questions just to connect with them and get to know who they are. Mm -hmm. And what you'll find over time is they'll sometimes pipe up and ask you a question on their own, or you might have made a note uh, in a notebook or Excel or Asana or whatever system you're using, Evernote, about that person. So you know they want a no impact type of workout. You know that they have a knee issue. So you know when Pio comes out, that's a person that you might wanna message privately. Yeah. So you'll have a whole bunch of people in this group that you get to know, and they all have this one goal in common. You know that they're trying to get fit and live a healthier life. So now rather than saying, oh, gee, what happened to that person that I had in the five-day clean eating challenge last month? Where are yeah. they? You don't have to ask where they are because now they're in your permanent group. Yep. Right? And you never lose track of those people. You get to know them and to build the relationships. I'm never, I should say, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised on a weekly basis that it seems there's always somebody in my group that I haven't heard from, sometimes in many, many months, that pops up. It happened twice today. Somebody pops up. And they just say, hey, I'm getting back at it. I really need your help. I want to be accountable, held accountable this time. I'd like to check in more often. And by the way, what else is coming up? What else is going on? New programs, whatever. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I, I especially haven't been in this three and a half years now, guys, just so you know this. Some of you, like if you're newer and you had a, a customer at once, at one point, and then they fell off, you think you've lost them for good. Honestly, a lot of people you think it's like, oh man, I'm uh, done. I can't, I can't believe it. They're they're gone forever. You'd be surprised how often they'll come back, especially if they got any any degree of success on the program. They know that they just need to return to it, and they'll still get progress again. So don't don't give up that hope. But I love that Jason that you're using that opportunity of the group to set the community up, and then to let your private messaging be more of the vehicle and tool when you are going to maybe make suggestions or things like that. So I really like that. Yep. Yep. So Look at that. a word of, oh, hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, a word of caution in that you are the engine in these groups. You're the leader and you run it. So if you do take some time off, uh, you're going to be out of Wi-Fi range. You're not online. Use a tool like Hootsuite or Buffer or something to keep the, the group going. Um, if you stop, there's a vacuum and it might sit empty or it might be filled by somebody else in the group that you might not necessarily want to fill it. If you know what I mean, they might fill it with inaccuracy. They might fill it with sales pitches. So this is kind of your hub. This is your house. You get to invite who you want to come over and party and do your group workouts in your house. Uh, but when you leave the room, if you're gone for too long, you know, you do that at your own risk. So I just wanted to be straight up about that in that, you know, you can't just post once or twice a week and think that the rest of the group is going to pick up and post and fill the gap for you and keep the thing lively. Um, I, I've tried that and things fall silent and it doesn't work and you have to bring things back usually by messaging people. Um, 
or, or just posting some great, great value and tagging people, which by the way is something else that's super powerful in these groups is when you know that there are maybe 15 or 20 people out of the group that have been quiet for a while. Maybe you just do a quick post about restarting and overcoming obstacles and offering some insights and some personal examples from that front and tag a handful of people who may be going through similar issues. So that, that's a really powerful part of the groups that I haven't talked about up until this point. So the more you know, right? We all remember that, I hope. Well, maybe I just remember that as a kid. The more you know is always on TV and they always tell you some neat little tidbit. Well, in this case, these are two huge juicy tidbits. One is Jab, 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 Right Hook, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, awesome book. Um, I know it's come up in the group a little bit. It was on sale on Kindle for two bucks a couple weeks ago. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. If you don't have it, that might happen again. And also Tribes by Seth, which is terrific. Uh, it's, a, it's a great example of how these groups should work. And he walks through a lot of great examples about why you should lead a group and why you should lead a tribe, especially anybody that's on this call. You're here because you've got a vision for your life. You're here because you have some value to add. So why not build that tribe? There are millions of people out there who share your same views and your same passions and would look up to you and appreciate the experiences that you've been through, your unique experiences and your unique perspective. So this is a great way to build the tribe is with these groups. So with that, unless there are some questions in the chat, um, we'll go ahead with reminders for what's coming up. Yeah, Jay. Five oh, here's another thing too is um, yeah. I, I wanted to just quickly cover. So for those of you maybe who have had your groups um, and they are just kind of crickets, I, I think it's important to recognize that I love what you just said there, Jay, is, um, is just get back in consistently and be real and um, ask for engagement. Right. So we're not, you're not just, um, you're not just posting, like you said, a motivational quote and like, and say, does anybody else feel like this? <laughs> you know, it's like, that's like some of the weakest thing, but if you can like do a cho like choices stuff, are you a, um, like which, which, which food's more tempting to you, chocolate or potato chips? Um, you know, just to start to get people engaged again, you know, or, um, or what is, um, What's your favorite work? What's your favorite workout? Cardio or strength, um, or you know that kind of stuff. Just a little, little bit more engagement, or you know which of these two in sto stories inspire you more? Um, and you can actually share like portions of stories. Like here's a little person's testimony. Here's another person's testimony. Which one speaks? I don't know. Just something that gives, um, or what about this person's story is, is most inspiring to you, or something yeah, like that. I found in the groups too that the the more just straightforward, honest, brutally honest and true you are about what you're sharing in these groups. I mean, it's a safe place, right? If you want demonstrate the behavior you want people to perform in there, right? If you want people to be genuine and honest and sharing and open, you kind of have to be that too. Yeah. So, you know, if I have a rough, rough week and I'm having an injury or something's going on or I'm, mad at myself because I ate garbage and, and I'm beating myself up. You share it in there, tag some people and the discussion will start. You know, people want to come in and help. They, they don't just want to be honestly, at least in, in the group, the way I, that I run it, they don't want to be preached at the entire time. They want to feel like it's an experience that the whole group is sharing. So anything that you can do, I mean, I know that there are a lot of moms out there that run groups yeah. like this. It's like some days you just want to pull your hair out as a busy mom and that's just the way that it is. So sharing those experiences instead of, you know, precious moment picture after precious moment picture tends to build some trust and some honesty in the groups. So, yeah. And so instead of being the sage on the stage, you can be the person who is in the trenches with pe people and that makes a big, big difference. And when people see you as a co journeyer versus the person who's got it figured out, it, it, you know, and maybe you can be a step ahead. That's fine. Um, but, but, you know, and honestly, in some areas, often there'll be people in your group who are going to be farther ahead of you in certain areas. You know, they might be able to, it might be stronger workout wise. They might be stronger with the nutrition. You know, that's great. Right. 
So already underway is the uh, Beachbody Coach, which is now the three-day sneak peek. <laughs> <laughs> I missed a little edit there, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's on, so play your part. Um, if you do have people in there, make sure that you show up. If you invited people and they didn't make it, show up anyway. Uh, let's all pitch in and make that group as amazing as it possibly can be. And man, it is, it is seriously, guys, the engagement is crazy. Like the post I put up this morning, we've got like, there's like 50 some plus comments already on this, on this thing, which is great. And that kind of activity, I'm not kidding you. So for the, the, yeah, it's huge. And the big deal is guys, we are normalizing. This is what we're doing. We're normalizing people looking at the Beachbody coaching opportunity. Now, not every single person is going to sign here. That would be a miracle if they did. It'd be really cool. But at the same time as we're saying that reasonable people look at beach body coaching and we're seeing like people's lives, like they aren't just sharing like they're just why they're interested in coaching. They're like sharing like, wow, I'm interested in coaching because I got a great transformation or I got this great progress. So it's so great to, and don't feel like you can't encourage people who aren't your people either. Like that would be silly just to go, oh, well, I guess I can only like this person's or I can only say something about this person's if they're mine, you know, don't, don't stress about that. And obviously be, you know, don't try to take somebody's prospect, but just, you know, encourage and encourage in that way. So keep it up. There it is. Call to action, the 10,000 lives by 2018. Right. I mean, we bring that up, but that's really the vision. That's what we're after as, as the team. So we're all playing our part in that, uh, reaching the 10,000 lives by summit. And, yeah, and just so you know on that, um, so Bailey is going to be contacting you leaders who have been, who've reached out to us. We're now starting to track numbers. Okay. We're going to actually, Bailey's job is going to be recording numbers. So I need to know, if you ran, we need to know if you ran a group in July, what kind of numbers you had in that. And we want you to start, start to consider like keeping separate numbers. Uh, so you're like, if like, if you and like three other year coaches are all in the group, you can count yourselves once. That's great. But you can't count yourself for August and September too, right? So we just want to, we want to try to get an idea of how many lives are really impacting. And that'd be really cool just to, to be able to look back and go, wow. Look what we accomplished and so many lives being changed. So, Coming up, a little tease for the call next week. Can we be friends? <laughs> Learning to use the monthly schedule to build your business. Anything beyond that for a sneak peek, Dan? Yeah, I think, guys, uh, we're really going to just start to talk about um, just more of understanding and the rhythm of our team. And again, everybody has a full right to not use the rhythm of our team. That's totally great. Maybe you're a week ahead, maybe you're a week behind, if you can even go that way. Uh, but we're really going to try to really settle back in. So when we first formed the GO team um, back in, in end of February, we started and we had a very specific system and it was free challenges going into a uh, paid, or excuse me, going into a uh, coach, or excuse me, a uh, uh, challenge pack opportunity webinar basically which then went into a 21 day challenge which then went into a coaching opportunity webinar which we asked people to become coaches we revamped that a little bit with the idea of the support group i think is a really a, a much better way of doing that uh, better way to add value better way to build your tribe um and it's the problem the reason is that the free challenges just were not generating people staying on long term as as people they were just like they would come in and they would just like, you know, it's like having a guest over for like, like one moment and they're gone. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we can make sure that we're um, uh, keeping engaged uh, with people there. And then we, of course, are going to invite people to our six day clean eating resets, um, which is, I think is a really great opportunity. You still can run the free invites or excuse me, free groups, uh, free challenges. That's fine. But, uh, and then I'll talk more about this next week, but just basically look, and understand that we'll be kind of resetting what our calendar looks like and our overall system. So you really don't want to miss next week. And I would encourage you guys to get your coaches on the calls. Okay. And I'm not saying that you like, Oh my gosh, guilt them in, blah, 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 blah. But here's the deal is really tap into their why. 
That's how you get people on the calls, right? Because of the why that we're potentially going to develop and give you some benefit to your business. And then you connect that to their why. Hey, remember when you said you wanted to help pay for your X or your Y? It's really great for you to be on these calls because then you're going to know more information. It's going to help you and it's going to get you more encouraged to, to do your business. So I would just say, you know, really next week, try to really get your, get your folks uh, on, the, on the call. So it'd be great. Yeah, and especially if you have anybody who has been an active coach and just hasn't been on all of the calls. I mean, for me, this is so super exciting because the idea of not having to play catch up and not having to figure out what's coming up in two weeks, what's coming up this next month, what is it to have this schedule and this calendar that's a repeating rhythm that you know every month, this is kind of when I need to start inviting. Every month, this is the type of challenge group. These are the events that are going to be happening. These are when the team calls are. That way, even the super busy coaches like we are, we don't have to worry about, you know, can I make the call? Can I not? And always feeling like you're trying to catch up and not knowing like, oh, if I miss one thing, will I have any idea what's coming up next? next. Right. Yep. And I really want to know that it's just this dependable process. So I'm psyched yep. about it. Yep. Good deal. That is it. Awesome. A little bit short tonight, which is great. We'll give everyone a full nine minutes of their evening back before we hit the top of the hour. So if you have questions about any of this, I'm happy to help. Um, Lindsay is also awesome at social media. It's something that she's done for years. So feel free to reach out to her if you know her. Otherwise, post in the coach club and we'll answer the questions there. Hopefully this was helpful. Hope you all got value out of it. See you soon. Thanks, guys. See you.